This video will demonstrate how to use multiple jack sinks and jack sources with Pulse Audio. Your Pulse Audio needs to be 6.0 or greater. Here's an article about that. I found two PPAs for Ubuntu 14.04 and decided to use the this one right here that's highlighted. Here's the other one. Uh, of course, you need to research that first before you decide to do this. Make sure that it's something you want. If there's anything else that it also adds, and both of them, I think, do. Anyway, I wanted to test 6.0 for this, and it's working pretty well. The advantage is you can set up every audio to have its own pulse audio stream inside the jack router so that you can apply effects, filtering, EQ, compression, limiter on each individual stream. And each individual individual stream may have its own characteristics, so this is quite an advantage when you want to doctor up the audio a little bit. We've also set up a three-person, three different remote call-ins for a podcast remote caller interviewer setup. So I have a caller calling in on Google Voice already set up, an application called Discord, which is like Skype or Mumble. It has a free server, which is one reason I thought it was interesting. Pretty good audio. It's very similar to Mumble's high audio quality at 48K and 96K bit rate, 48K sample rate. And we have Source Connect Now, WebRTC, and it's using stereo at 512 bits, audio bits. A yeah, very high quality stereo stream. So we'll check all those out. They're already coming into the system here. And I left them unhooked as far as what I'm sending to each caller. So I can take all the audio, mix minus it, so that the Google Voice does not hear their own signal, but it will hear the voices from Discord and the other caller using WebRTC. We'll go over that towards the end of the video here. Let's take a look and listen to the audio we have coming in. We have uh, a separate audio stream using one tab of the browser from a desktop audio or a default media player. Other similar hot swap type things like this. So that's one option for sending audio to the three remote call-ins. We have also using the same browser, but a different tab and a different Pulse Audio Jack Audio Sync Magnitude for some high quality. That was track number one from the album Ambient Nights by Robert Otto from Magnitude.com. Did you know that? For and here's the Google Voss Voice. Here's a Google Voice caller. And he's already getting. Uh, but Landline. Then suddenly you can start seeing that. We have a caller calling in on Discord at high quality audio. Say, give me some options to destroy and defeat ISIS. And, and we have WebRTC uh, using stereo audio. That, that from a revenue perspective, ours is, you know, in the last year we probably tripled our involvement. And I have on my system uh, an example of a media player using its own pulse audio stream with a jack sync VLC. And that's kind of found with the pedals. I pedals have a little more clarity. So I have the option of taking the, the default desktop audio, taking Magnitude with its own stream, and the VLC. So I, if I wanted to, I could, as an example, I would just run wires from VLC to all three callers. Then I could control how much audio they receive with the mixer. VLC. Orchestra, flutes. Magnatune. And the desktop audio. Investing sooner takes a few minutes to sign. I can also hear it since I'm routing the outputs of these to the system, which is my sound card. The other system is the mic jack, which I'm not using for the mic that you're hearing my voice on. I'm using a USB mic here. 
but I've used this for a test tone. And find that very useful when trying to set up audio and adjusting all the volumes and EQs and stuff. Okay, so now to do the mix minus, we have the Google Voice coming in here. So we want the caller, the remote caller using Discord and the remote caller using WebRTC to be able to hear the Google Voice. So you just run wires from Google Voice to the other two callers. Like that. And over to WebRTC from the same. So as I light up Google Voice, you can see it's going to the sound card here the screen recorder, to the Discord, and to the WebRTC, but not back to Google Voice so they don't get an audio repeat and an echo. So that's very easy to do mix minus using Jack Router. Here's uh, my setup for the my voice here. And I could, of course, want all my voice to go to all three callers, so I would do the same here. So they can hear me. I like to monitor my own voice, but you don't have to. I like to send it to the sound card so I can keep an ear out on how I'm sounding. So that's all the mix minus business and adjusting the audio. Let's take a look at the audio and why we're using jamming. So let's take uh, Discord here. This. Rapid firestorms unleash a fearsome force of nature. Watch. Just look at that sky. Terrifying so there's a limiter. Tornadoes bring chaos to so many. But according to our next guest, you don't need to be afraid as long as you so are Do an EQ bypass here. Genestine on how parents and kids can stay weather ready. It's not going anywhere. And your satellite funnels on the right. The wisdom from. And it's just one example. Here's the WebRTC. Opened up a, a company. And of course, that would you would be able to apply jamming to the same. And for my voice, I'm doing the same thing here. Here's my voice without the EQ. And now the EQ's back in. So it has a bit of a limiting compression, almost a bit of an automatic gain, sort of, so to speak, so I don't have to keep my volume exactly precisely the same. This will adjust for that with a little amplification, a little limiting, and this EQ here. That's just one of many applications in Linux that you can use. That's basically the setup here and some of the advantages to using multiple jack sinks and I'm using the Pactal load module module jack sync and jack source and you can rename it using the client underscore name equals and then name it whatever you want and inside jack audio you can apply effects and LV2 plugins. Here's some of the ones that are on my system. I'm using the KX Studio audio plugins that you can get with a ton of LV2s on it. Using the Jack Mixer. And I think that's just about everything I wanted to cover here. Now, in Pulse Audio, if your application won't let you select where you want this to go, you can do it in this Pulse Audio volume control. So figure out which one you want, and if you want to change it, then once you've brought up the different sinks and sources, just click on here and choose which one you want. It'll stick right there and stay. Same thing for here. 
you have an uh, option to uh, select which one you want as far as the inputs. And I think that's pretty much it. I find it uh, very, very useful to be able to create these multiple module jack sinks and sources and to let Pulse Audio almost create your own virtual mixing router here and where you can route and redirect and add filtering. It looks like a wiry nightmare, uh, but there are other applications in the KX Studio suite where you can save all this and it'll bring it right back. Thanks for watching.